to 6 o'clock. Please come up here, choir members. Thank you for coming, everybody. Good evening. Those of you that are joining us online, thank you for joining us. We'll be singing hymn number 527, 527. And I am going to assume that not a lot of people know this song, because this is the first, the first Sunday I was here, a lot of people did not know this song, <laughs> and I conducted it. <laughs> so stand and sing 527, and I'll teach you, all right? Be thou exalted forever and ever, God, God of eternity, the ancient of days, wondrous in wisdom, majestic in glory, perfect in holiness, and worthy of praise. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels, be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems of rapture adore thee. Thy be the glory forever. Amen. On the third, be thou exalted, O Spirit of It is exciting to sing new songs. Obviously, you got to go through the process of learning those songs, but uh, how wonderful it will be once we learn them, all right? But uh, good to have you tonight. Glad that you're here. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, thank you that we can assemble ourselves once again tonight, looking forward to the preaching of thy precious word tonight. And Lord, I pray that you're pleased. Help us to rise up as a church and continue to be what you would have us to be while we live in this world. And Lord, thank you so much for what you have done and will do. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Choir, you remain standing. Let me read to you our verse uh, for the month, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear. Now listen to the choir as they sing.
Now let's open our hymn books to hymn number 195. One hundred and ninety five. Glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to the blood applied glory to his name on the second i am so wondrously saved from sin jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name glory to his name Well, good evening, everyone. You at home, we greet you as well. We're glad that you are here with us. Uh, 
Turn in your Bible, if you will, to Psalm 27. Psalm 27, and uh, I'm going to be speaking upon the subject of uh, From Fear to Faith. And uh, the reason why that that stood out to me this week is because of everything that's going on this past year. And you know, I think a lot of times with some Christians, maybe more than I think, our, uh, their faith is being really tried. And uh, they come to the point in place where that they fear things uh, that are around about them. And by the way, when you look into the news every day, there's really nothing good that is said about anything. I mean, it's always, and it uh, gets to the point where that you don't even want to turn on and listen to the news because it's always uh, trying to bring fear upon people. Um, things are being said that I believe would be better unsaid and things like that and just brings fear in, into, into the heart and life uh, people and then especially uh, Christians where that they are uh, really failing in their faith many times uh, because of the fact that uh, they fear a lot of things. I remember uh, this had been several years ago I, where I used to pastor. There was a older couple uh, that lived not far from the church and, and I would go by uh, you know, uh, on the Thursday or Tuesday, whenever the visitation was or whenever they wanted me to come at night. And I couldn't, uh, I could not go during the day and for the simple reason that they were sleeping during the day and they stayed up all night long, all night long. And because they feared somebody would break in to their home and, uh, and take everything and maybe kill them or, or something of that nature. And, you know, I tried to talk to them about their faith, have faith in God and things like that. Uh, but they were into the point and place where that fear just overwhelmed them and they just could not do anything because of fear. And so uh, we see in the psalmist uh, here, uh, David is a psalm. Uh, about David uh, before he took over as king of Israel. And we see that there were, uh, after God had told King Saul uh, that his uh, kingdom or his time on the throne was over, and then David would take over as king. And from that very point, uh, we began to see the enemies of David appear. And of course, King Saul tried to kill him and things of that nature. And so here we find there, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that David feared a lot of things because he was on the move. He had, he had moved to the cave of Medulla and things like that and to different places around about, and he had fear uh, for the enemy. But here in this psalm, he comes to the point in place where that his faith overcome his fears, and we see that in this psalm. And, and uh, before I get started, I want you to notice uh, in the psalm, and, and uh, there's 13 times uh, in this psalm where that the word uh, my Lord or the Lord or Lord or something of that, uh, of that semblance is used here uh, in, in this chapter of the psalm. And uh, I, I think you can see the reason why. You know, if you say, God is Lord, well, that's a general statement. But if you do it the way that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, Thomas said, my Lord and my God, it becomes personal. And so here we see that in this psalm, when he says the Lord or Lord, we see that he's uh, talking to the Lord. He knows the Lord. It's personal to him. It's just not talking about the Lord in general, but it's talking about his Lord. And so I just wanted to show you that uh, for the simple reason 
that he is going to be using the Lord a lot of times here in the scriptures. And every time that he says it, we see that there is a new thought that comes out of that. So uh, let's read the first three verses of Psalm uh, 27. It says, The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my, my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and, and fell. Uh, though a host shall encamp, encamp me around the, uh, about me, against me, my heart shall not fear. Uh, though the war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. And so here we see the first thought that I want to bring to you is that David had confidence in the Lord. And we see you going back and looking in these verses of Scripture. Uh, you'll see in verse 1 uh, where he says, The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. And, of course, we see that he didn't, uh, didn't need to fear uh, because uh, the, of the darkness or anything like that because he had the Lord as his light. And that is important, the dark days that faced uh, uh, King uh, uh, David before he became king was tremendous and things like that. And there were darkness and dark days and things like that. And so he just comes out and says, I don't need to fear because the Lord is my light. He is the one that's going to lead me and guide me and direct me and things of that nature. And so he just didn't need to fear the darkness at all. And then not only that, but he's talking about here, the Lord is my salvation, my salvation. Now we know that David is already saved. He was saved by grace. And so the word salvation means a deliverer. Uh, the Lord is my deliverer. And so we see that when he was talking about that, he was sure that there was going to be victory. There was going to be victory in his life because the, uh, uh, my, his God, his Lord, was the deliverer. He was the one that was going to deliver David from the enemies and from everything that he feared in the past. And so we find that the Bible says that he uh, was the, uh, he looking to the Lord as a deliverer, and it was a sure thing that he was going to have victory in his life. And then not only that, but he goes on to say, by the way, it said, The Lord is my light and my strength. Whom shall I fear? And so he begins there to uh, tell us about that. Then it says, The Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom, for whom shall I be afraid? And so here we find that he uh, talks to us about the Lord was his strength. And so he just need not fear uh, because of his weakness. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us over in the New Testament. I'd like for you to turn there, if you will, in uh, the 12th chapter of uh, 2 Corinthians, and we see that in verse 9 and 10. And, and of course, the Apostle Paul is speaking here of this very thing, and he says in, in verse uh, 9, he says, He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. The Lord is speaking to him. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproach in, the, in necessities in persecution in distress for Christ's sake. And then he goes on to say to cap it off, for when I am weak, then I am strong. When we see that uh, the Lord is your strength uh, and you realize that with, uh, you're so weak, but he is the one that is able to give you the strength that you need in your life. And so he said, I'm not going to be afraid uh, because of that very thing. And so going back into the Old Testament, looking at Psalm uh, 27, we see the second thought that we get here. Uh, in, in, verse, uh, uh, in, in verse 3 and 4, it says, uh, Though my a host shall encamp about me, 
My heart shall not be afraid. Though war shall arise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I desired of the Lord that will, uh, will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, uh, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to choir in his temple. And so here we find that the Bible telling us uh, in the scriptures here, uh, because uh, David had faith in the Lord, he took time to worship God. He took time to go to the house of God, or maybe he, if he would be somewhere, his thoughts would go towards the house of the Lord. And so we see here, uh, even though he was going through the trials of life, he always had time to even think about and go to the house of God. You know, that's something that I believe that during this past year that a lot of Christians have neglected the house of God. They have just simply neglected uh, to, uh, uh, to worship the Lord in a matter of coming to his house to worship the Lord. And so here we find uh, that we find that uh, because he, he took time to worship, uh, we see in verse 4 uh, this thought here that comes up. Uh, and one thing I have desired of the Lord that, I'm, uh, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, all, the days of my all the days of my life, and behold the beauty of the Lord, inquire in his temple. And so here we see that in verse 4, his desire was to dwell uh, in the house of the Lord. That's where he wanted to be. He wanted to be in the house of the Lord. And of course you go, oh, I, I got, when I was looking at the scriptures here, I sort of started in, in running other references uh, up on the house of the Lord. And you know, David loved the house of the Lord. Over and over, especially in the Psalms, where that you see him having reference to the house of the Lord. He made much over the house of God. He made much over, over being in the presence of the Lord and things like that. He took time, even though he was fearful and things like that. His faith was such that he just had to go and to worship the Lord. And so we see that we ought to be the same way. Regardless of what takes place, we ought to have enough confidence in the Lord that where if we can come to the house of God and where that we can worship the Lord uh, with one another and with our church family and worship the Lord in, in a way that would be pleasing to the, uh, to the Lord. And then look, if you will, uh, where he says uh, that uh, uh, verse 5, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in the pavilion. And so we see here the pavilion is uh, just simply meaning his protection. Uh, the, the pavilion is a protection, or we could say uh, the Lord would protect him and be his defense, and not only that, to be his shelter in the time of need. And so here we see that, and uh, by the way, he says, all the days of my life I be, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to choir in his temple. And of course, the Bible talks about the beauty of the Lord. Uh, over and over again, and certainly David was acquainted with that and inquired uh, in, the, in his temple. And so we see that David was worshiping the Lord in a full-fledged way. It just He just didn't go to the house of God, but he participated. He did the things that were necessary for what God told him to do. And so we see his, his worship of, of the Lord was complete. It was a complete time that when he went to the house of God, he spent it where that he was worshiping the Lord, and we see that it was a complete recognizing God, looking at God, the presence of the Lord, and different things of that nature. And of course, we see in verse 6, the Bible says, uh, Now my eyes, uh, uh, my, shall my head be lifted up above the enemies around about me, Wherefore, I will offer his, his, uh, in his tabernacle sacrifice of joy, and I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. 
And so we see the result here because David was protected when insecure. Uh, we see that he could rejoice uh, in the things of the Lord. He could even sing praises unto his God, unto his Lord. And so I believe that that is most important where that we come and sing the praises of God. I've never, never been a fan of what they call a 7-Eleven song. Have seven words to it and you repeat it 11 times. I've just never been a fan of that when we come to the house of the, word of the Lord. When we sing praises unto him, it ought to be where that we see what he is doing. The grace of God is moving upon and, and uh, different things like that. Singing the songs uh, that mean something and have a meaning to them and where that if we can lift our voice up to the Lord and sing the praises of the Lord. He can rejoice and he can sing praises unto the Lord uh, because he had faith in God and trusting in the Lord to be able to do what he would have them to do. And then not only that, and our going, time's going by, but I want to get through this and where we see that in, in verse 7 through 12, we see the compassion of the Lord. We see the compassion of the Lord. And it says there in, in verse 9, we'll not read all of it for the sake of time, but in verse 9 where we see the Bible says, Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. The Lord was his help. And he says, Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. So we see that the compassion of the Lord came out and where that he was actually helping David, helping him to overcome, helping him to do things that he would not be able to do on his own. You know, the Bible tells us, uh, he says, uh, over in the scriptures, over and over again, talking about this very thing that the, the Bible's uh, compassion and the help that we get from the Lord during times of, of sorrow, the times of, of uh, trouble that comes into our life, we can have the help of God to overcome the things that are in, in facing us every day of our life. If we will rely upon the Lord, the Lord will help us. He is our helper. He is the one that helps us to overcome the things that we face and the, the trials of life and the fears that come upon us. We see that uh, God is the one that helps the individual. And then not only that, but look, if you will, in verse 11, where it says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the paths, a uh, plain paths, because of my enemies. Here we see in this verse of scripture, at least to me, the Lord is going to be his guide. He is going to guide him. And we see that the, he is asking the Lord to lead him in the plain path. In the plain path. And you know, that's the way that the Lord always leads an individual. In the plain path where everybody can understand where they are to go and the path that they are to uh, follow after the Lord. Uh, the plain path, we see that not only that, but it's a planned path for the, the child of God. God has it all planned out for the Christian. If they'll just be willing to be led of the Lord, he, will, he plans out and got a plan for your life to follow in the path that you should go. And so we see that not only that, but it's a, a protected path. Uh, not only that, but it's a profitable path. And not only that, but it's a, a pleasant path uh, that we are to follow. He will guide us in those uh, areas of our life. And, of course, the Bible telling us uh, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light, and we are to follow him, and, and we come to the point in place in our life where that we'll be able to follow the pathway of the Lord that he has for us. And then notice, if you will, in Psalm, uh, Psalm 25. Go back there, if you will, uh, just for a few moments. and We'll look 
at a couple of verses here. In Psalm uh, 25 and verse 4, it says, Show me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me into thy truth. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been even of old. And so he's talking about leading him in the path. And we see here, lead me in thy truth. He will always lead you to the truth of, of, of the word of God. If we'll read it, a lot of times we'll not read the word of God the way that we ought to. We may read a, a a little bit, a verse here, a verse there, and, and not get much out of it. Uh, but we ought to meditate upon the Word of God where that He can actually lead us in the truth of God's Word and then teach Him. He says, not only to lead me in the truth, but I want to be taught. I want you to teach me the truth of God's Word. And the only way that I know today uh, that we can be taught the Word of God a word is get in and study the word of God. Study the show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, the emphasis there is dividing the word of truth. Correctly dividing the word of truth. And that is so important in the day in which we live. Uh, you know, there's a little... Uh, there's people out there that'll take a little bit here and take a little bit there, and they can prove just about anything that they want to. But I'm telling you, the path that God has chosen, it's always in truth. You can depend upon it. You can look to it, and God will lead us in that path. And, uh, and not only that, but he'll show us tender mercies and loving kindness in our life. He will do it. I, you know, every time I read this, uh, for, I always think of Psalm 23, where it says he leads you in the paths of righteousness and all like that. Uh, you know, I just uh, began to think about that, uh, but we'll, we'll not uh, do that right now. Uh, but uh, look, if you will, going back to our text once again, in uh, verses 13 and 14, where that we see another truth that comes up. We see that in these two verses of Scripture, we see David's counsel to us and to others. Everybody that will read or listen to David, he has counsel for us. And we see that it says, I, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart Wait, I say, upon the Lord. And so the counsel of David is this. From fear to faith, David was one that he says, I believe. David had some wise counsel for us. And first of all, he says, just believe. Just believe God, what God has for us. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. And then not only that, but he says, Wait on the Lord, waiting on the Lord as well. And so we see that he, we need to believe what God says, but we need to wait upon the Lord as well. Waiting upon him. He's going to do something as he leads us down the path that he wants in that plain path. We need to just wait upon the Lord for him to do the work in our hearts and our lives. And, of course, when we don't wait upon the Lord, then we just, it all falls apart. It all falls apart. And so we see here that faith really can paralyze an individual. As the, as the couple I mentioned just a moment ago, it paralyzed them. They could not do anything because of fear. And that's the way that, uh, you know, you, you, you listen to radio and things like that, it comes to the point where that it plays upon your mind and, and you don't want to do anything. You just want to wait until it's all over before you begin to do anything for God and things like that. Well, it may never be back the same way. 
So what are we going to do? Are we just going to continue uh, doing the same thing that we uh, want to do and live in fear and things like that instead of faith? And, of course, we know faith is unbelief. That's what it is. It's unbelief. Remember what Jesus told his, his disciples? He said, O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. And, of course, he meant they, didn't have, they would not believe what the Lord had for them. And so we see that fear is, uh, fear is uh, to the point where that it actually means unbelief. I don't believe God. I don't believe how he'll take care of me. I just simply do not believe uh, that, uh, that, uh, that he can do what he says he'll do. That's simply unbelief. And when we have unbelief, then God is stopped in his tracks. He can do nothing. He can do nothing for us and things of that nature. And so we see that faith can overcome fear. Faith can overcome fear. And when we have faith in God, it'll take out fear all the time. I want you to look, if you will, in Psalm uh, 34. And we'll close on this verse. Uh, this verse, I, 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 I think that it will help you so much. Uh, in Psalm 34, in verse 4, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. All my fears. Here he says, I sought the Lord. I sought him out. I prayed about it. I sought the Lord. And he said, I had confidence that the Lord heard me. He heard me. You know, if we have confidence of when we pray that God hears us, then things are going to work out okay. They're going to be all right. But you know, if we have doubt, well, well I'll pray about this, but I don't really think God's going to do anything with it. Uh, you might as well quit. You might as well not pray if you're going to do that. And so he says here in that verse of Scripture, in verse 4, I sought the Lord, he heard me, and then not only that, well, after he heard him, he said he delivered me. He delivered me uh, from all of my fears. What do you have fear about? If you take it to the Lord, if he hears you, he will deliver you. He will deliver you from the fear that you might have, might face and you, might be more than one thing that you're fearful of, and things of that nature. But we need to just get a hold of God and let him uh, do the work in our hearts and our life. They, uh, uh, Psalmist says, I sought the Lord. And not only that, but when he heard me, he delivered me from all my fear. All of your fears are taken care of when we come to the Lord. Maybe we've never prayed and asking God to deliver us from the fear of what, what is up on us and what is coming up on us. You don't know. You know, you think everything's going to get better, but we just don't know that to be true. It, it might not be. But what are we going to do? Are we just going to continue living in, in a fearful life? Or are we going to just have faith in God? and let God take care of our fears and go ahead and serve him and do what he would have us to do. What are we going to do? I sought the Lord. He heard me and he delivered me from all of my fear, all your fear. What are you fearful of? He can deliver you from that fear if you will call upon him, if you will ask him. He will deliver you from all your fears. Let's bow our heads, please. Just a few moments, we're going to give an invitation. You at home, you can bow somewhere. God's spoken to you. And uh, that way you can make things right with the Lord or whatever the Lord would have you to do at home. If you're here tonight in the auditorium, uh, just make, a, uh, make an altar wherever you're at. Just wherever you're at and call upon the Lord and 
And whatever it might be that God, maybe God's dealing with you altogether different. I would not know. But whatever it is, if you seek Him, He will deliver you. He will deliver you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you uh, for the Word of God. And Lord, I, I pray that your, your will will be done in our life tonight. And Lord, I, I just pray that you would have your will and way in the invitation, for we do ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, please, if you would. Brother Dave, what is the song? 156, as you're all on the altar. As we sing, just make an altar somewhere and ask God uh, to speak to your heart. Ask God whatever it might be that you're burdened about. God will. He will deliver. He will do what he says he will do. Come on, preacher. What about it tonight? Boy, what a timely message. Maybe tonight God has spoken to your heart and said, this is for you. You need to take it with you tonight. You that are online, maybe, maybe tonight God has spoken to your heart. What about it? Has fear paralyzed you? Does it keep you from doing what God would have you to do tonight? The Spirit control can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest. Yield him your body and soul. As we sing another verse, if no one comes, you'll close the invitation. God speaking to your heart? Can I tell you, he should be. God's word has been opened tonight. The Spirit of God has moved. Has he moved in your hearts? Have you responded to him? Does the Spirit control Folks, we needed the message. I tell you, on a daily basis, all of us face fear of some kind. It keeps us from doing what God would have us to do. And you and I, we must choose. Are we going to trust the Lord? Are we going to seek God? Or are we going to give in to that fear and just stay shackled? I hope and pray that you'll do what the Word of God said tonight. Seek the Lord. Let Him lead you and guide you. May we follow Him. God knows which way to go. So, amen. Thank you, Brother Jack, for the message. Folks, I want to encourage you to be in prayer for, uh, obviously, our community and what has gone on with the families that have been affected by the shooting at the FedEx building. And, and obviously, um, you know, I know there's a lot of people doing a lot of things for those families, and uh, that's, that's good. And so the least we can do is pray. And so I hope and pray that you'll be mindful of those families and asking God to send the right people to help them and, and uh, I know I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but four of those family, four of those victims was of what they call the Sheik 
seek uh, community and and uh, so uh, we ask that you uh, pray for everyone and uh, no doubt that community really was affected and so please pray for them Becky yes I'm sure. Yeah. Amen. Well, we, in our Sunday school class, we, it was our hope that those that were, that were, their lives were taken, that they knew the Lord. And it's, uh, of course, we knew about this one that, that is good friends of the Barnes family. And, and I know that uh, the Barnes's daughter knows, knows uh, that, that lady and, and um, and so, so, but there again, that's how come it's so vitally important. You and I live our faith. Uh, you just never know what's going to happen. And uh, opportunity that you have to share your faith with someone, because you just don't know. You just don't know. But do be praying for these families that are obviously affected by this, and in this case also the churches that that that. You know, have to, uh, you know, be, will be called upon to minister and to help. And so, so as a body of believers, we, uh, we need to do our part, that is for sure. So let us, let us bow our heads and, I'm sorry, Susan. Yes. For, for those of you that, that do not know, Miguel lost uh, an aunt uh, over the weekend and, uh, uh Friday, and it was it was um, though they knew that she was hurt, but uh, it was it was quite unexpected. Uh, and uh, so, uh, just pray for the family. I think it's they bury her on Tuesday, correct? There in Puerto Rico, and so be praying for the family and and just God's will to be done there as well. Okay, all right, church. Let's let's be dismissed in word of prayer. Our Father, thank you. For your word. Thank you for the reminder that fear can be conquered. Lord, that you can, you can uh, uh, help us through these fearful times. and That you will lead us and you will guide us. And so, Lord, help us to look to you. I pray for the families of the victims that, have, uh, that were involved in the shooting here in Indianapolis. And, and Lord, would you pray for your grace and your comfort during this time. And, and Lord, I pray that you'll meet the needs that only as you can. And Lord, would you send the right people uh, to these people, these family members that are struggling and that need, need some help. And I pray, Father, that you would be honored through all of this. I pray for all the churches that also are affected by this, uh, the communities that are affected, that, Lord, that you would help and Give them what they need. And, and Lord, may your will be done. Lord, I pray as a community we'll get through this. And that, Lord, we would do what we can, Lord, to help people. Lord, turn to you. And, Lord, and heal and, and put, put back together their lives. But, Lord, may we love them. May we pray for them. And, Lord, thank you for what you have done for us. Lord, may your will be done as we go home tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.